book burnings are unfortunately nowhere near as dramatic as they used to be, nowhere near as action-packed and spectacular. Today's book burnings are not carried out by 12-year-old boys in brown shirts carrying torches like in the glory days of the Schnazis in the 30s, as they engaged in the time-honoured tradition of burning the works of people who disagreed with them. Rather, today, book burnings are carried out by sensitive readers wielding pens rather than flaming pieces of burning wood. And um, that is an unfortunate thing, because if it was the latter, if it was the Schnazis yet again, it'd be pretty goddamn obvious what they were doing. Instead, they hide behind rationales such as to, to make things more relevant, you see, to make sure that these classic works can be enjoyed by modern generations, by neutering them and castrating them, as is the case as we have here. Across his beloved children's books, hundreds of the author's words have been changed or entirely removed in a bid for relevancy. This is the works of Ruald Dahl, a Norwegian, by the way. He may have been born in Welsh, but like a good, smart man he is, he and his parents both rejected Welsh culture and the British as well, and spoke primarily Norwegian at their home. Which, by the way, sounds exactly like Norwegian immigrants. <laughs> like, yes, we might live here, but we're not like you. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know enough about the guy uh, to uh, comment on that, but I think it's funny, and so you should as well. But Word Matter begins the discreet notice which sits at the bottom of the copyright page of Puffin's latest edition of Roald Dahl's books. The wonderful worlds of Roald Dahl can transport you to different worlds and introduce you to the most marvellous characters. This book was written many years ago, and so we regularly review the language to ensure that it can continue to be enjoyed by all today. You know damn well what that means, and yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. They hired insensitive readers to rewrite a huge portion of Roald Dahl's work. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Let's uh, scroll down to the bottom here and just look at the list of changes, shall we? So, we start at the top here, right? And let me just go over here and then just, just start scrolling. And I want to point out as well. Roald Dahl's books are such marvellous books and so well aimed towards children in a growing period because they are spicy. They've got an edge to them, they've got, they've got a certain roughness, they've got a, a piquant element to them. They are meant to be aimed at kids who are just around that age where words like pee pee poo poo are very very funny and fart can make them laugh for hours on end. You know, the point in their growth where they're beginning to test their boundaries, they're beginning to rebel just a little bit, and Roald Dahl did just that. He used vivid imagination and description to paint a non too flattering picture of many of the characters in his books, and that was the goddamn point. I mean, hell, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a horror story, straight up, where most of the characters, well, they're not killed, but they undergo ridiculously awful things because they were awful people, and the awful things were intended to teach them why they were awful people and why they should stop. And that right there, as you can see, that was all the changes. That long ass scroll there is the complete list of all the changes. Well, um, I beg you to tell Mr. Hoppy I'll be your slave for life. I know, I think you could. Get... I beg you to tell Mr. Hoppy you'll be my hero for life. Because, uh, you know, the word slave has, uh, has connotations in the modern world. Uh, and people would be completely unable to see that for what it meant. In other words, I will be indebted to you for life. Of course not. Let's uh, pick another random example, shall we? Just go up here. I gave some to an old Oompa Loompa. I gave some to an Oompa Loompa. Old. Old is no longer a fitting word for modern day children. <laughs> let, me just, let me just point out something out here, okay? Old is a very relevant term for kids. 
I, my, my cousin's children, for example, look at me and they see a crippled old man with a meter long beard in a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> okay? Everyone above the age of 12 is old to them. This is not offensive to children. And uh, thereafter, just from chewing gum, Miss Bigelow was always dumb and spent her life shut up in some disgusting sanatorium. Removed. Just straight up. There's a whole bunch of these where literally the text, I mean, I um, can do here, was uh, there was there's 80 examples of removed here. So there are tons of lines that have not even been rewritten or replaced, but just simply straight up deleted from the original works. It might not be as dramatic as a book burning, but it is. That is exactly what is currently going on here in the modern context of the term. And is they, because a lot of the counter argument is often that, okay, but you'll, you'll still have the original, right? You can always enjoy the original Roald Dahl books. You don't need to rebuy them or anything. This is the beauty or the, the, the subtle sinister element of this entire thing, right? Yeah, it's true. You will have your copy until you lose it. In a, in a move, maybe. Or you misplace it and you can't find it. Maybe you put it in storage somewhere. Maybe you put it at the back of your closet. God only knows. Or you lend it and you don't get it back. Or the thing is straight up destroyed. Maybe it's lost on a trip. You know, you, you, you lose your baggage and it's just gone. Or maybe there, there's a fire. God forbid, etc, etc. All of these things that do happen and can happen and eventually your book will no longer exist and you will not be able to replace it. When you go down to the bookstore to try and get that book back, you're not going to get that book. You're going to get this book. You are going to get the censored, sanitized version of his work. And eventually, after enough years have passed, it will be the only version anyone knows and anyone remembers. The original will literally be scrubbed from history, straight up. There will come a point, assuming Amazon doesn't collapse first, where Amazon's The Lord of the Ring, with the Amazon cover, is going to be the real Lord of the Rings. There will come a point where the Rings of Power covers become the only covers anybody goddamn recognizes. Oh well, it might not. This is the horror scenario because luckily the Rings of Power failed miserably. But that is the end goal of this. It is to replace what Gay went before with what is relative to the sensitive reader today. That is the ultimate aim here. It's not truly about updating the work so that it can be enjoyed by a new generation. Again, these are children's books. They have no idea about wokeness. They've got no idea about like, racism. They don't understand these terms. They don't get why any of this bullshit is offensive. They are kids. These are not here. Um, get all that mud off your pants. Get all that mud off your trousers. Like pants replaced with trousers. <laughs> the fat shopkeeper said, the shopkeeper said. No child is going to look at that, is going to look at fat and go, ah, yes, you know, this word is problematic because it creates a, a culture of, of hatred and derision towards fat people. We shouldn't call them fat people. We should call them voluminous persons of considerable gravity. No, they, they don't get it. And that is exactly why it's funny, because that's not a word you're supposed to use. And that is precisely why it is funny. And you can't repress that instinct either, mind you. Kids are kids because they're kids. You can repress their behavior. It'll only make them act out even more when they're finally allowed, when you can't stop them. Like, literally, these are, these are just normal things. Every, every kid thinks the word fart is hilarious. Every, think, every kid thinks that fat is hilarious, 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 etc, etc. It's dumb. And again, it is meant to replace the originals. Because if you gave a kid a choice, he would always select this one on this side right here. Because it simply sounds better. It is better. It's funnier, goddammit. 
And this is nowhere near a isolated incident either. Uh, recently, for example, uh, Don Rosa, the best author of Donald Duck, by the way, I still own like volumes of his stuff because it's genius. Like his art style is amazeballs, right? Several of his issues of Scrooge McDuck's origin story is getting removed because it's not woke enough for the modern world. Another recent example was this right here. So this is a painting, Leif Erikson uh, Discovers America. So this was the Norwegian explorer who discovered America. This was made during the Northern Norwegian Romantical period, where people were trying to build build uh, build a spiritual worldview, almost like not spiritual, but like they were trying to rebuild Norway as an idea, as a thing in people's minds, because we were at the moment under Denmark, I believe. Or was that one in Sweden? I'm gonna be a little bit dodgy on the precise, but we were not a proper country at the time, so we were trying to build a national identity. This picture was taken down from the National Museum because it promoted colonialism. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but no, I did not colonize America. <laughs> I mean, I wish we did. We should have, but we, did, we didn't. And so this is somewhat stupid, isn't it? And again, this is ancient historical work of art that is scrubbed from history because of a modern day panic. And a stupid one at that. That will be the end result of this. And it hiccups. It is why it should not be allowed. It is why nobody should go out and buy a Roald Dahl book anymore. And why you should tell everyone with kids to not buy one because it's not actually a Roald Dahl book. If anything, go to a used bookstore and see if you can find one there. And uh, this will not age well. Again, this will not age well in the slightest. This will literally be known as the modern day book burnings in another couple of decades. At least so is my prediction. Though I do wish we'd stayed with the little kids with the brown shirts and the torches, because again, it was very <laughs> picturesque. And a nice warning sign about what was going on. You know, a good alarm bell. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.